Was the debut of the Bitcoin ETFs on the stock market yesterday a lot less good? <laughs> that was bad grammar. <laughs> was worse than what people actually were reporting initially. And how did that affect the price of Bitcoin, crypto, Shiba Inu uh, yesterday and today? Plus, what are the U.S. senators saying about the Bitcoin ETF approval? Is it all going to money laundering? <laughs> or is the cryptocurrency market, of course, something that is hard for the older generation just to get their minds around? And that's okay because every single new technology comes with some kind of resistance from people that don't understand why we need it right why do we need the internet we have uh you know uh male pigeons right <laughs> we have a guy on a horse that rides and gives you know a message to the king right what do we need the internet for <laughs> i'm sure when uh when they started with cars, people were like, what do we need these cars for? We got a, a horse in a buggy, right? That's that's good enough. <laughs> so there's always going to be some pushback. Probably the horse lobbyists were going against the, the president, right, at the time. <laughs> so it's always going to be someone that doesn't understand what's happening. And we'll talk a little about what does this mean? And does this mean anything, right, if we have the right people in the government? So... All I ask from you is that you give me a beautiful smile, smash that like button, and let's do the Shiva Shake. So we're seeing this morning a little bit of a pullback here. Um, Bitcoin is testing the 45,000, 46,000 level again. Uh, with the resistance so far holding the line at 45.87.6, Shiba Inu has been able to hold so far uh, the 1,000 level. It got a little bit of a test there, there last night uh, during the night, but for the most part, it has been consolidating here at 10.14. Ethereum as well, consolidation here for the most part on the four-hour chart. Um, where where is the stochastic flow? I refreshed and got it back. <laughs> it's weird sometimes. So we're looking at the four hour chart. We can see that on the four hour, we're getting closer and closer to the bottom here. I'm looking at Bitcoin currently. On the one hour, you can see a major, you know, pull down here on the bottom of the stochastic flow. Um, and that, you know, tells me that we are ripe for a little bit of a movement to the upside. Soon we'll see as we get our second trading day you see last time it popped 10 percent uh after it it lived here on the bottom um we'll see how the second day of trading goes i'll i'll share in just a second why uh there was a lot of excitement but then after the data was analyzed a little bit people understood that it might have not been as good as we thought initially and although there were other factors, which I talked about a lot last night, the new correlation or between um, the stock market and the crypto market, and the stock market had a pullback, so crypto pulled back with the stock market, but there was also a little bit less, um, you'll see, buying than we thought. There was a lot of volume, but not a lot of buying. We'll see that in just a second. Uh, and so if we're looking just technical, Bitcoin should have a movement here in the books if we're looking at the stochastic full. But stochastic full doesn't give us 100% of the whole story, meaning it's not successful 100% of the time. Sometimes it will tell us there's going to be a change in momentum. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it stays in that kind of zone for a while. So it's not a 100% tool, but with high probability, it gives us a good indication that we're going to change trend um we'll see now if we take a look here ron tweeted the bitcoin etf first day was terribly unsuccessful most people are reporting that four and a half billion was traded they are not analyzing the data if you look at the numbers you will notice that total traded was 4.6 gbtc was 50 percent of that with 2.3 billion the gbt's numbers were the majority sales slash outflows due to the higher fees and the old bitcoin being locked up Therefore, the real numbers were close, approximately zero to new inflows. 
Um, and so a lot of money was shifting from GBTC to others, right? Because they had the highest uh, fees. Plus on the old uh, timey, uh, all those um, brokers that were not allowing people to buy the Bitcoin ETFs, they were allowing them to sell only GBTC. So it could be that a lot of people were also selling GBTC and that was creating volume um, with that big number. So what Ron is saying here that a lot of money was also shifting, not all of it, but a lot of money was also shifting from gay scale into these others. And that's why in, in the, in the, in the sum of it, it's not that big of a day where, where people thought we'll have to see, we'll have to see, um, where it is now. British hold hodl here says if BlackRock and Fed delegate 1.5 billion of inflows today, but GBTC sees 3.5. 3 billion outflows, nothing has happened in the Bitcoin market. The net effect is zero. The negative cash create in the GBTC would have the, to sell its Bitcoin. The BlackRock and Fidelity would have to buy when the cash arrives. This creates market volatility, but no real movement. If I was BlackRock, I would hold back my new fresh capital, let GBTC outflows hit my fund, and then once the sell side volatility hits, start acquiring with the fresh allocation I have. This way, they get 1.5 billion on day one and another 2 billion on day two. Uh, or whatever timeline they set. It's better for marketing and they the chart, the way it is today, seems like the business plan was let GBTC bleed. Um, so, so it seemed kind of like that. Again, there's a lot of factors here. I don't think there's one thing. I don't think it's just that selling and they were maybe the other funds were waiting. They don't have to do it one to one, right? They have time to recalibrate. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what happens here today because we have seen a little bit of a you know pullback uh, you know a little bit uh from from last time we talked uh and last night when i went to sleep <laughs> uh, and it will be interesting to see where we go from here and if potentially this is you know the bottom of this uh mini dip here or uh do we have more to go if we zoom out to the daily we're high up right um, but it, again, it doesn't mean on the daily that we have to drop all the way down to the bottom. Sometimes momentum, narrative, uh, change things. People are referencing this um, photo here, right? Uh, whoa, what happened? Okay, it didn't let me make the photo bigger. <laughs> Can I do this and then this? I just want the photo. Wait, where am I? Uh, open image. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay, no, it didn't let me. Okay, so <laughs> technical. <dude. laughs> You can't try to try to laugh and sing at the same time. <laughs> Technical difficulty time. Um, they're referencing this graph um, that from 1980 until the gold ETFs were introduced, the price of gold was dropping, of course. Uh, and uh, once the, they were introduced, there was a massive growth right uh, right after. So people are saying, OK, look, it looks very much like the Bitcoin graph. And now we're going to go to the moon. Um, I think it's going to affect, but again, we have a lot of factors that are also um, factoring in what the crypto market will potentially do here in the next few years, the four-year cycle and all that, uh, and the potential reduction of interest rates around the world, um, and that could also uh, assist as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Again, I'm not a prophet, um, but I, I'm very, very positive on what's going to happen. Um, yeah. I'm allocating my assets according to that. You have to decide at the end of the day how much risk you can take, how much you want to allocate. I don't know your financials. I don't know your risk por por uh, portfolio. I don't know, right? So I can't tell you what to do, but I'm, I'm risking a little bit more here. But th that's just me because I have that uh, possibility. Everyone is a little bit different. I saw Elizabeth Warren uh, come out, and if you missed, uh, the SEC chairman, Gary Gensler, in the end was the deciding vote uh, on the decision to allow uh, the Bitcoin ETFs to start trading on the market. Now, according to the law, it should have happened. But Elizabeth Warren comes out and says the SEC is wrong on the law and wrong on the policy with respect to the Bitcoin ETF decision. If the SEC is going to let crypto burrow even deeper into our financial system, then it, it's more urgent than ever that crypto follow basic anti-money laundering rules. And so the, the claim here is that crypto and Bitcoin are, are used to money launder. Now, from the history of time <laughs> until now, most of the money fiat has been used also to money launder. So... Um, should we ban regular money too, right? Fiat? Um, no, right. Um, 
yes, there's some bad actors, like in every place, uh, and here they're bad actors too. You want to make laws, make laws, right, in your country, and then if if those laws pass, right, and the, the representatives vote on them, then great. But now the law states that, um, that the Bitcoin ETFs are legal, and the courts decided, right, there was a, a, a lawsuit and the, the SEC lost, right? Uh, and I like what Adam said here. He tweeted, hey, Lizzie, can I call you Lizzie? <laughs> As a law professor and a senator on the banking committee, one would hope that you would know how this works. While the SEC as a rulemaking organization may provide its guidance and interpretations of the law, it does not set or decide that law. The binding interpretation of the law in this country is and always shall be is with the judiciary. The SEC did not get the law wrong because the SEC was not the one who decided the law here. That was the D.C. Court of Appeals where a three-judge panel unanimously that the SEC denials of these ETFs was arbitrarily and capriciously a violation of the Administration Procedures Act. You may not like the policy or the assets, and that's fine, but no one got the law wrong here. You as a center have the ability to change the law, and you have filed to do so because the majority of elected officials have disagreed with your pro-banking parental police state legislations of preventing the American people from choosing their own assets. By the way, she keeps putting up laws and they keep getting rejected. So don't don't feel like <laughs> uh, she, she has any real sway, right? You're allowed to suggest the policy is wrong or you think Bitcoin is risky or admit the truth that you say you just don't understand it and it's all scary. But to have the audacity to suggest that the DC Court of Appeals views matters less than your own when it comes down to what the law is, is outrageous things for a senator to say. It's not uh, nothing short of an insult to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to have a senator who has such little respect for the rule of law and so little respect for her, her own constituents. Um, that she feels the need to babysit their finances. I look forward to supporting your next primary opponent, whoever they may be. And listen, if you are pro-crypto, now again, this is tricky because many times uh, representatives don't align uh, fully with what you want and you believe, right? That's kind of the problem of any, um, you know, uh, uh, election, right? Um, and, you know, where I live, um, the way that the government is set up isn't the best, right? Um, the way that it's set up in the U.S. is a little bit better, but still kind of complicated and not the best all the time. If you want to uh, um, go for a pro-crypto representative, but they don't uh, align with other things that you want and believe in, it's kind of tricky. Uh, and so for the most part, we see that the U.S. government, uh, most representatives, especially the Republicans, uh, are very pro-crypto. Uh, um, it seems as the representatives get younger and younger that there's going to be a shift, a more bigger shift, because this is how it is. The younger generation understands better. The younger generation, if there's a representative, he's probably trying to get to for the younger vote. Uh, and uh, if that's how some people will believe that they will win their, their election, they're going to go heavy on that. Uh, figure out what's best for you. I know 60% so of you are in the US, that US that's why I'm, I'm talking to you. And in the UK as well, Canada, wherever you are, Australia, um, you got. if you want pro-crypto laws, if you want pro-crypto regulation, you have to vote for pro-crypto people and hope that that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, <laughs> where I live, I think <laughs> that crypto is the last thing on the people's minds uh, you know, uh, when they vote uh, people into office. But um, if you are in a country where everything is basically, you know, rainbows and butterflies, um, then that should be something on your docket. And, okay, uh, again, this is just my opinion. Um, always do your own due diligence and figure out if crypto is good for you or not. But it's going to be very interesting to see in the next five to 10 years, where the crypto legislation around the world or, uh, you know, um, oversight goes, right? Will it crack down and be more and more oversight? Um, like that uh, rule of over $10,000 in, in crypto transfer, you have to uh, file a, um, a, you know, a report with the IRS uh, and things like that, um, or will it get more free? I think it's going to crack down a little bit. I don't think it's going to get more free. The more and more they approve things, the more and more regulation they're going to, an oversight they're going to put on it. 
for better or for worse, right? You, you, you don't get uh, something without giving up something, right? You want regulation, you want it to be more legal, then you're going to have to um, re relunct it. No, uh, um, re release some of your anonymity, for example, and things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how all of this plays out. Don't forget to check out the links in the description down below to help support the channel. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time. Thank for all the super thanks that you guys leave. And like I always say, let's make a lot of money.